Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do another conversion between decimal numbers into a 32 bit floating point representation using the IEEE 754 standard. All right, so in this one, we'll do a, a number that's a little bit more complicated than the last example. We'll have a, a repeating fractional component and a negative sign just to kind of show a different, different decimal number to start. So if you remember, you can break down the conversion into six steps. So the first thing is you take the decimal number and you convert it into a fixed point binary representation that just means that you leave the radix point where it is and to, and you convert the whole number into a binary number and you convert the fractional component into a binary number and you stick it on the left and the right of the radix point then what we do is we convert it into binary scientific notation and what that means is that you shift the radix point or float the radix point over until you only have one bit to the left of the point and then you multiply that remaining mentissa by two to times two raised to an exponent, okay? And then you do steps three, four, and five, which is where you determine the sign bit, determine the biased exponent, and determine the mantissa with implied leading one. And then those three fields are combined to form your final 32-bit binary number in floating point. Okay, so here's the number we're gonna tackle is we're gonna do 45.4 negative, negative 45.4, okay? So we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna write this down right at the top here. So 45.4 base 10, and it's a negative. And step one is we're gonna convert this into fixed point binary. Let's do the conversion manually just so that we can see the repeating pattern on the fractional part, and it's always a good reminder. So what we do is you take 45, can divide it by the base, and we're gonna track the quotient and remainder, and then the remainder will be our LSB of our whole whole number portion. So two goes into 45, 22 times, remainder of one. Bring 22 down. Two goes into 22, 11 times, remainder of zero. Bring 11 down. Two goes into 11, five times, remainder of one. And then two goes into five, uh, two times, remainder of one. And then you have two, two goes into two, one time, remainder of zero. And you can see the end coming. You have two goes into one, zero times, remainder of one. So what we're left with is this is the MSB. Okay, and you know you're done when you get to the zero because you can't bring that down anymore. And so then we fold this over and what your number ends up being is one, zero, one, one, zero, one. So one, zero, one, one, zero, one. And that is the whole number portion of the fixed point binary. Okay, now this is a little more interesting. So we're gonna convert the 0.4 into a fractional binary number. And so what we do is we say two multiplied by 0 0.4, and then we track the product and we track the whole number portion of it. So if you start off, you get, this is 0 0.8, and then what we do is we bring the whole number over, and that's what we track as our MSB now, okay? And then what we do is we bring down this part to the next product, okay? So we bring down just 0.8, even if it was 1.8, we bring that down. So then we multiply that, and we end up getting 1.6, bring this over, bring this little fella over, and that's a one, and then we bring this little fella down, 0 0.6, okay, and then you multiply that by, by two, and then you get uh, 1.2, and you say, all right, bring this little buddy over, and you got that guy, and then we bring down the two, so then you got two multiplied by 0 0.2, and you end up with 0 0.4, Four, so then you bring the zero over and you got yourself a zero and then you bring down the four, 0 0.4, multiply it by two and you end up with 0 0.8 and so then you bring this over and then you go, wait a minute, this is where I started, right? So this 0 0.8 is exactly what I started with. So I know that if I do this, if I continue these four steps, will repeat forever and ever and ever. And so then what I have here is I have a pattern where when I say this is LSB, this is going to be, if I roll this down like this, I get zero, one, one, zero. So I get zero, one, one, zero, but it's gonna repeat 
forever and ever and ever. And so I can write that and just go off the side of my paper or I can note that with the repeating symbol. So this is this is kind of interesting when, when you get to floating point because this is where you have a number that goes forever and ever and ever, but floating point doesn't have infinite number of bits. So you can immediately see that's like, well, floating point isn't gonna ma it match the exact number because there almost is no exact number. It goes forever and ever and ever. So we're gonna get as close as we can, okay? All right, so that is the binary fixed point number. So now let's let's uh, convert that over into uh, scientific notation. So we'll go ahead and come along and say, we're gonna move this radix point. So in this situation, what I wanna do is I wanna move it so that I only have one bit to the left of the radix point. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, Five. So my exponent is going to be five. So I'm going to go times two to the five. And then the number that I have is now one dot zero one one zero one zero one one zero, except those last four bits are repeating. Okay. So I got a whole lot of bits here and life is good. All right. So now let's go to step three is the sign bit. And it's like, what is the sign bit? Well, remember, you just look at it and zero is positive, one is negative. So that's one. And that negative is not mean this is a two's complement encoding. We're not two's complement encoding the number. We're IEEE 754 encoding it. Okay. So we got a one on there that we'll track. And then let's go ahead and let's get to the, let's get to the Actually, I'm kind of running out of paper there. Let's move over here. Uh, step four is going to be the biased exponent. Okay. So what I mean by that is that you have the exponent of five. Okay. So the exponent is five. That's my original exponent, but I need to bias it. Okay. So I need to bias it by 127. So my biased exponent is going to be 127 plus five, which is 130 two and that's in decimal okay so remember that's in decimal now what is biasing just to remind yourself they don't want two's complement codes in the exponent because it, it makes the math more difficult so they want like an unsigned number in the exponent so you want eight bits of exponent which goes from 255 0 to 255 so they slap an exponent of zero right in the middle okay so that's it's basically taking a number that's centered around zero where you have positive and negative and biasing it or shifting it up okay but also remember you can't use zero or 255 so the range actually goes from one to 254 and that's because these are reserved for special characters like infinity and zero okay all right so i got my little buddy there i'm not done i still have to convert that into binary but if i just pump it into a my algorithm over here i get one zero 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 one zero zero that's now my biased exponent that represents a hundred and thirty two decimals so i got one and then i got four zeros and then one zero zero so i got how many bits one two three four five six seven eight okay all right now i do my mentissa which is in this case is actually kind of large but it's really interesting though too because Here's the mantissa, right? So remember, this is the mantissa. It's what represents separate from the exponent exponent part, the times two to the five. But we have an implied one because it's always gonna be one. We always rotate or, or we always shift or float the point over so that we always have a one here. So we don't need to list the one in the mantissa that we store. It is what we call implied. So this is the number I'm bringing over. So I bring that little fella up and what I end up with is zero, one one zero one and then i have this repeating number okay and that will just repeat until we run out of bits and in step six is where we put everything together and we will show how we actually do run out of bits so let's go ahead and pack as much information in here as we can our 32-bit number is going to be a sign bit of one and that's the reg that's this little guy right here then our exponent our biased exponent is going to be this little fella so we got one zero 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 one zero zero so that is my exponent that is biased okay this is the sign and now here comes our buddy the mantissa all right so here comes old mantissa and we're gonna pump it in here as follows so we're gonna go zero one one zero one and then we're going to have zero one one zero so we'll go zero one one zero but then this repeats 
So I'm going to actually, I'm going to put a little notation that it's like right above there. I'm sitting here and I just fill this up until I get to 23 bits. So it's going to repeat once. Then it's going to, we have enough room for it to repeat again. And then we can repeat it again. That's three times. And we can actually repeat it one more time. And then we're, we only got two bits left. So we go zero, one, and then we're out of bits. So this is how you handle these repeating fractions. So this is going to be bit position zero in our final number. This is bit position 22. This is bit position 23. This is 30. And this is 31. And that is now my 32 bit number. Okay. All right. So life is good. Let's do a check on it really quick. Like we did last time. So I'm gonna come out to ultimate solver.com and I'm going to go ahead and say, let's put in our new number of negative 45.4 and convert that. And I wait, I come down and here we go. So lo and behold, I get one as the sign bit. That's nice. Then you get one zero 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 one zero zero so that matches and then here comes our mantissa zero one one zero one okay so that's right zero one one zero one and then check this out zero one one zero zero one one zero zero one one zero zero one one zero and then i'm out of room and it goes zero one and we don't have any more bit any more bits Okay, so we did it. So that is actually the right number. Now here's what's interesting about this is that this is an algorithm somebody wrote on an online calculator that is implementing what we just did in software. Let's go see what uh, it actually looks like when you get into hardware. Okay, so I'm gonna put that on the screen. We've got everything on the screen. Here's this little script that I wrote, not script, program, in C. And the number I'm gonna do is negative 45.5. Four, so I enter that and now let's take a look at what we got. So in this situation, I have sine bit is one, then my exponent bias exponent is one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, life is good. And then here we go, zero, here's the mantissa, zero, one, one, zero, one, life is good. Now here comes the repeating pattern, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, and now I was going to go zero one and run out of bits, but it went one zero and you're sitting there going, what, what's going on here? This is, this is actually real computer hardware. This is a Linux server and I put a 32 bit floating point number into memory and it messed up the last two bits. And it's like, what happened? Well, floating point is only accurate to six or seven uh, decimal places. So what's happening here is once these things start repeating, the further you go into the mantissa, the more chances you have for having some inaccuracy. So this is just inherent within the IEEE 754 format. It's inherent in all floating point numbers. Nobody promises that this is going to be exactly the decimal number. It's just as close as we can get with 32 bits. But more importantly, we have done it. You have converted a decimal number, negative 45.5, Four into a 32-bit floating point representation. Nice job and see ya.